where you are. Don't you get tired of this? It's all right, Miss Phillips. It's nothing, really. Miss Grant, what's happened? Oh, nothing, thank you, Pat, really. Good night. Thank you, Jordan. What's going on? Get me the police. And you say the man wore a mask? A ski mask, yes. And that it's happened before? Every night for a week or more, if I've been getting back late, I've heard the footsteps. Just the footsteps? Until tonight. Tonight they called out my name, and then by the lift, the man with the mask. Hmm. Have you, uh, reported this before? No. Why not? How do you report hearing footsteps? You must have been frightened. People following you, uh... Contrary to what you're thinking, Sergeant, I don't frighten easily. I'm not thinking anything, Miss Grant. Yes, you are. You're thinking that I'm some kind of attention-seeking hysteric who's making this up. These late nights, are you often out late? No more than most people. And tonight? Where were you tonight? At dinner with a friend. A man friend? No, a woman friend. A colleague of mine. Do you have men friends? Yes. Any man in particular? Not at the moment. Well, I'll, uh, I'll make a report, of course, but, uh... But, uh, since I wasn't mugged, molested or murdered, there's not much you can do about it, right? So you thought she was crying wolf? Did she strike you as the nervous type? No, sir, not particularly. But there'd be no other reports in that area. None of the other residents had seen anything, nor any of the staff. Mm. Well, leave it with me. Thank you, Sergeant. Sir. Well, Major Cowley, I must say your interest intrigues me. I know what you're thinking. She comes from a family with money and influence. I happen to think she's not crying wolf. Nine W. Yeah, that's the answer. Now you've got to think of a question that goes with the answer. Nine W. Go on, amaze me. Excuse me, Herr Wagner, will you spell your name with a V?
You could see that I was backing in. I was making uh, all I'm the sorry. right signals. Sorry, it's my fault. Okay. You're admitting it? Yeah. Well, what else can I do? Uh, I should be able to fix that for you. No problem. Really? Hmm. And the space is yours. Thank you. Yes, well, that's one way of making friends. She looks pretty self-assured for a neurotic. My charm overwhelmed her, you see. I see. Your donation can be in any form you wish, sir. We prefer a cheque or a postal order, but you can give cash if it's more convenient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Famine relief, Susan Grant? Hello? Hello? Coffee? Uh, yes, please, black. You're all right. You look a bit strained. No, I'm fine. Yeah. Freedom Incorporated, Henry Laughlin. These things take time. Good night, Susan. Good night. It's my way of an apology. I fixed the old night as well. Well, what can I say? Well, how about saying you'll have a drink with me? Be churlish to refuse. Turned out to be a long drink. You've hardly told me anything about yourself. Yes, I have. I like good company, good food, hot sun, cold beer. This I work for the government. What's it really mean? Like I told you, I'm a civil servant. So are traffic wardens and refuse collectors. I'm in security, okay? Ah. Oh, this is the moment I'm supposed to say, how glamorous you're a spy. And you're supposed to say, no, it's very boring, it's all paperwork. No, it's very boring. It's all paperwork. You happy? <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Did you? Mm. Ah, good. Well, that's the general <laughs> idea, isn't it? I have to do it again. Yes. Do you go out a lot? So, sir. Isn't there someone at your car? I was frightened for you. What about the car? Oh, that'll be all right. Come on, take your home. Yes. Thank right. you. You've gone quiet. I'm all right. I enjoyed myself tonight. Really did. Broken rear light put you to quite an expense. Oh, it's all right. Do it all the time. And what happens when the driver turns out to be an old frump? Oh, it's luck with the draw. I'd invite you in, but it's been a long day. Yeah. It's okay. 
I'll call you soon. Do that. Good night. Mummy? Is that you, Mummy? Yes, dear. Are you all right? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I dropped the receiver. <laughs> How are you? You sound strange. Do I? I'm just tired, that's all. I could do with a good night's sleep. I've been calling you all evening. Been out? Evidently. Are you coming down this weekend? Uh, I don't know. Oh, do come, dear. Cook's longing to feed you up. We both think... Don't that... fuss, Mother. I've just had an enormous meal with a charming young man. <laughs> well, that's something. I hope he's not another of these weird Chelseaites you get involved with. No, he's not. Far from it. But that's all I'm going to say about him. All right, dear. So off to bed with you. Good night, my darling. Good night. Dinner with a charming young man. One of yours, George. <laughs> Doesn't fit any description I would make, but uh, yes, I think it was. Good. I know something's going on. Even when she was a little girl, she'd never admit to being frightened. She'd bottle it all up inside. I wonder where she inherited that from. Am I wasting your time, George? Oh, I don't think so. Still, I'm not complaining. Sitting here with her very best malt whiskey in this lovely house. That takes me back. Anthony was more at home in your company than anyone else you know. He was a fine man, Margaret. Since he died, you haven't exactly been a regular guest. I was only waiting for an invitation. Take care of Susan. She's very precious to me. There you go. That's right. Liver sausage, this. That's right. I can't stand liver sausage. You know that. <laughs> oh, neither can I, mate. What'd you buy it for, then? Well, it was, uh, Just sitting there. Nobody was interested. Some poor old pig got a chop to provide that. Well, has anybody shoved her out of the window yet? You don't believe her, do you? Oh, rich kid. Filling a long day collecting for charity. Time drags. I mean, maybe she's just trying to get attention. There, looks. She doesn't need to try. What's Cowley involved for? What are we doing here? You heard what he said. Pick her up, stick with her, let me know if anyone bothers her. That's all he said. Yeah, Nanny's anonymous, I saw. Yeah, well, it could be worse, couldn't it? She could be 15 stone with a moustache. Will you suss out on associated charities? Well, that seems kosher enough. They collect for old folks' homes, orphans, famine relief, that kind of thing. The only cuckoo in the nest seems to be this organisation called Freedom Inc. Sounds like a stationer's. Mm. Who's the cuckoo? Well, they're not a charity for a start. And they campaign for the release of political prisoners from jail. It's run by this guy called Henry Laughlin. You're not eating your liver sausage. Do you want to be force-fed? Well, I can't sit around here chatting all day. Seven to base. Give me a computer check on a blue Vauxhall. Foxtrot Yankee Hotel, 407. A Victor, over. Checking, 37. Base to 37.
you to check negative on the car described. Over. Yeah, thank you. Two pounds forty nine, please. Sick joke. Any idea who it is? I don't know. Ex-boyfriend? Someone you dumped, won't take no for an answer? There's no one like that. Do you recognise anyone in the supermarket? Anyone get close to you? Didn't notice anyone. But then who notices people in the supermarket? Yeah, too busy checking prices, aren't they? Boo. Henry! Uh, I'm sorry. I was just passing by. Didn't know you had company. Come in. Oh, no, thank you, no. Just passing. I'll see you tomorrow at the office. All right. But you're welcome to come in and have a drink. No, really, no. I should have phoned. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Man listening outside the door. Oh, he wouldn't. He wouldn't do that. Who is he? Well, he works with us. Henry Laughlin. He lives across the street. Andy. An admirer of yours, is he? Come on. It's too old. They're never too old. When I rang you just now, I got through to some switchboard. Who did I get through to? Ah, uh, it's an answering service. Got hold of you pretty quickly. I just happened to phone in. Do you want me to take this phone? Oh, Scott, I wish you would. I'm still on duty. Now, listen. You lock everything when I go. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Spoken like a true security man. Right. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Laughlin spent four years in Lubyanka and never even got to Siberia. Four years in Lubyanka? Oh, lucky they didn't throw the key away. Took part in the Hungarian uprising. Yeah, it was years ago. He formed Freedom Inc. back in the 60s, dedicated to politicals everywhere. Big job. Yeah, oh, he doesn't like us, by the way. Ah, uh, it's a shame, isn't it? He's written reams on the evils of the secret organisation. 1959, the realms of evil. 1963, the covert society. 1968, the enemy within, and so on. You're right, nutter. Yeah. I don't think he's this sort of nutter, though. Watch out, gotta go. Hey, try not to lose her this time, eh? Yes, I am fully aware of the pressure, Excellency, and I am dealing with it. Yes, good night. Well? 
Uh, this new boyfriend is turning out to be a, a bit of a nuisance. He's got Laughlin jumping now. Then remove him. Oh, and um, when you do, perhaps the girl should be unfortunate enough to witness it. All right, Mr. Burr. Hello? Yes, Bodie, I'm fine. Yes, the locks are on and the chain. Go ask a man and check. What do you mean you don't trust me? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you for worrying. <laughs> Bye. Hello? Hello? Hi, you all right? Yes, Bodie, I'm fine. All locked in, safe and secure? Yes, the locks are on and the chain. Susan, Susan. There it is. Tiny, isn't it? Magic. Oh, what about the voice? The voice calling my name. One thing at a time, Sue. Oh. I don't think I can take much more of this. I mean, why? Who is it? I mean, why me? What have I done? Calm down. Hmm? Come on, let's have a drink. Oh. Brother, don't you? Fair hair guy. Neville? How do you know about him? I asked around. What's his problem? He owes money. A lot? Hmm. To some rather heavy people. Hmm. He wants you to help him out. Yes. Why do you know that? And you're not going to. Not anymore. What do we have to talk about my wretched brother? Oh my god, the lights! Okay. Birdie, Calm do you down, think... don't panic. But do you think it's those. Shh. Where's the fuse box? In the hall, cupboard on the right hand side. Miracle of modern science. Are hey, you trying to get some sleep? Susan. Hmm. What is it? Who oh, lives next door? No one. They moved out. Where are you going? Shh. I'll stay there.
Over and out. There's nothing on him. We'll see what the doc comes up with. So much for the cry wolf theory. Wolf or wolves. To let us go, just like that. I mean, you knew one of them, didn't you? Do you want them to do arrest me or something? Your gun. They never even asked you about well, your gun. They just overlooked it, OK? That day you bumped into my car, you did it on purpose. I'm an assignment. You've been assigned to take care of me. Hmm? You're very worthwhile. What do you know about that man? Who was he? Oh, Lord, don't find out. Just get in the car. Now I remember where I've seen, you know, the good-looking one, Mr. Mr. Doyle. Good-looking, yes. Yeah. In your right, car. Get in the car. Yes, he was, Just, he was. Look, in have a... I got to prize you in, or what? You can't prize someone in. You can only prize something up or out or off yeah. or anything. Good-looking. Lateral scar mark on right upper thigh, vaccination mark on right leg. Could it be South or Central American? That's common there. Could be. But the blood group, skin pigmentation, everything suggests British parentage. Frankly. Could be an Eskimo, right? Mm. Oh, well, maybe his fingerprints will show. Your best chance. Thanks, Doc. Right. I've heard of dropping in for dinner, but breakfast? This is a nice surprise. Always saying I don't come over enough. And you don't bring your friends. Oh, perhaps she's turned over a new leaf, Miss Grant. You brighten my weekend. Now tell me, Mr. Bodie, what do you do? Um, well, sort of security, really. How interesting. What is it you secure? You, for one. Me? Mm -hmm. Yes, I work for the government. <laughs> Can't say any government's ever made me feel secure. When Susan's father died, he left a great deal of money. What the government gave me after death duties, estate duties, Lord knows what duties, was hardly enough to feed the cat. Mother, you're shameless. You're rolling in it. Are you a gold digger, Mr. Bodie? Oh, but of course, Mrs. Grant. I like him, Susan. Well, that's something. Edward James Smith. He's got one arrest way back. Released through lack of evidence. Ultra right wing, he's got affiliations in Europe, South America. Suspected hitman. Pity he died too soon, really, isn't it? Bodhi wouldn't have shot to kill if he'd had a choice. Yeah, now they know he's CI5. Or that he became too much of a damn nuisance. You see, he can get in people's hair, can't he? Special delivery for Mr. Lofman. Flat 17, third floor. Thank you. Mother? Oh, if you want to win the girl, win the mother. Do you want to win the girl? No, it'd be too easy. Thanks a lot. Well, according to your mother, there's no opposition. Old chinless milksop, something. 
She hasn't met them all. Oh, God. Hello, Neville. Who's this? Her uh, name's Bodie. His mother in the house. Yes. My brother Neville, full of old world charm, as you can see. You. I mean, a few thousand. It's petty cash to you. I told you, Neville, I'm sick and tired of telling you why. This time it'll be different, I swear it. <laughs> How many times have I heard that? How many times have I paid your debts only to see you make the same stupid mistakes all over again? Susan's been brainwashing you again. No, she has not. Neville, you're 27. You've been bankrupt twice. You're at the mercy of every glib talking con man who crosses your path. Giving money to you is like giving a gun to a baby. All right. If he won't help me, I'll find another way. I hope it doesn't upset your gracious living. Oh, the girl's down in the country with the boyfriend. We'll have to get her. We should have done it before. Was that you there? <laughs> Those were wonderful times. I miss my husband a great deal. <laughs> Enough of this. I'll be dragging out the movie projector next by the pool at Cap Dantee. Oh, why not? I like old movies. Poor Neville. I've ruined him. Time after time I've paid his debts and each time I seem to have made it worse for him. No, you haven't. Look, he's a grown man now. He can make his own way. By the way, the guest room's freezing. I put the blanket on. Oh. You hate them? <laughs> I'll switch it off when I go by. Good night, Mr. Bodie. Good night, Miss Scrum. Night, Sue. Good night. Hey, you were right. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's all part of the service. Is that why you're doing all this? Doing what? Risking your life. That's my life. I didn't realise Mrs Grant wasn't your real mother. My parents were killed in a car crash. Yeah, I know. She told me. That expands quite a lot. What? Well, you being a learner. Like you. Possibly. Sorry about the blanket. No, it's okay. That's your room, now. That one there. Mm -hmm. Right. Good night. Good
You were after the silver. What were you going to do? Chloroform it? That's right. What about your friend, the one who got killed? Was he after the silver as well? I don't know anything about anyone getting killed. And you don't know anything about frightening the young woman to death? That's right. Hello? Laughlin? It's Mason. I couldn't get back to you yesterday. Yes, yes, listen. It may be too late. We've got to move. You are holding a Mr. Raymond Miller. You is solicitor. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Miller. Don't worry. You'll be out of here by the evening. I'd like to speak to Mr. Mason, please. I'm afraid that's impossible without an appointment. Is this his office here? Mr. Mason. Just a moment. Who the devil... Doyle. I'm sorry, sir, but uh, just... That's all right, Miss Wells. You're acquainted with a Mr. Henry Laughlin? We act for him in certain matters. Yeah, he spoke to him on the phone about an hour ago. Phone tapping? Now, just a minute, Mr. Doyle. And the regulations weren't infringed. We believe your client's implicated in a very serious crime. Grab up, Miller. Cyanide. Injected into the back of the neck. Neat. Yes, neat. Cyanide. The girl back at work? Yeah, I'm Bodhi on the spot. I think it's becoming a labour of love. <laughs> well, I hope it doesn't lapse into reverie. All my political life I fought against the invisible governments, the faceless wielders of power. And now you set them on me. I'd done nothing of the kind. George Cowley was a friend of Anthony's. When I sensed that Susan was in danger, I asked him to look into it. That man's big brother. A grey-suited spook. Answerable to God knows whom. He's protecting Susan, and that's my first concern. It should have been yours. I know why she's being harassed. And I put an end to it. God help me. Mason. I'm a solicitor. I represent Mr. Henry Lockley. I know. He's instructed me to hand this over to you. Thank you. Three seven eleven. Three seven. Yeah, I lost Bauer. I got the tape safe though. I put out a red A over. All right, understood. Hello. I'm speaking. That's not true. I did everything to the letter. No, wait. Listen to me. Thank you. 
Night, Jen. See you tomorrow. Night. Yes, I am. Oh, you wish to make a donation. How much are you thinking of giving? I must say that's very generous. Well, let us say it is a matter of conscience. Uh, perhaps you could give me some idea how the money will be spent. Of course. Our main function is to raise money for food and supplies for the undernourished parts of the world. We see every stage through ourselves. We leave nothing to chance. We have people that work in all the countries that we aid. They supervise the disbursement of the funds and the distribution of the supplies. Do you have any questions, sir? Hello? Are you still there, sir? Hello? Listen, I've got trouble. Give me Alpha and 4-5, but tell them to maintain radio silence. Maintain radio silence, over. Just drive. Yeah, I know, but do we turn left or right? Turn left and drive south over the bridge. South over the bridge, right? You're the boss? That's right. Turn right at the roundabout. Got that, 4-5? Yep, A24. Keep going for three miles. Where are we going through, Woodley? You'll be told, just keep going. Oh, beautiful, just keep on going. What do you want her for? Shut up. Well, first you try and scare her, now you're looking to... Very smart. Enough to get you killed, that's how smart. Nice try, but he talked too much. Where the hell's he going? Go right around this roundabout and then make a left. Sir, we're getting his tracker signal now. Could be the airstrip at Padley. Maybe. A definite maybe. Go for it. The Mets are alerting all mobile patrols. But Bauer's obviously armed, and he's got the girl. Next left, and then first right. Oh, the full mystery tour, eh? For you, perhaps. Now, out. Now, start walking up the runway with your hands up. Any tricks, and she's dead. 
Come on. Henry Lachlan is an idealist and a brave man. His commitment to freedom of political thought is absolute. When he alone was at risk, he was unshakable. He was determined to release this evidence of torture used on political prisoners in Central America. But the government of that country sought to prevent him, and they found a way by threatening the safety of his daughter. You, Susan. He's not my father. My parents were killed. Your mother was killed when you were a little girl. Your father was imprisoned. During that time, your adoption was arranged. When your father was released, it was felt that your happiness was secure and shouldn't be disturbed. Would you like to return this to him now? George. Really? Didn't know I've got green fingers, did you? <laughs> there, you see? That's about me. 